The HomePod is back. The OG. Can we can we still call this one the OG? Uh, anyways, this seems pretty similar to the first generation, the true OG, the one they discontinued. So let's take a hands-on look at what's different. We'll get my first impressions after using one of these for the past few days. And I just wanna help you decide if this is something you might want for your home or more specifically your smart home because that's really what sets this one apart. Let's go. Sponsored by Trend Micro. Yo, what's up guys? My name is Shane, if you're new here, and this channel is all about building an easy Apple Home smart home with new videos published every Sunday and live streams every Wednesday. Here is the new HomePod, and this HomePod will certainly play a very important role in your smart home. In fact, Apple has put a pretty big emphasis, in my opinion, on the smart home functions and capabilities of this new HomePod, uh, but more on that in a minute. First, let's go ahead and just take it out of the box and see what we got. So this one here is $299 uh, US and the original one, the first generation came in at about $349 US and then they later reduced the price to $299. So uh, not really any price difference here than the first generation. So again, $299 for this comes in this midnight color, which is slightly different than the original space gray, I think from the first generation. Uh, so you can get this or white. So you got midnight or white. White is still the same. We'll take a look at that in a second. One of the big differences is here is that the power cord uh, comes detached so it is easier to detach the power cord from this one you could on the first generation something a lot of people didn't know this one is just a little bit easier to do that and as you can see um, the design looks pretty much like the first generation here let's bring over the first generation uh, so this is the first generation this is the second generation I'm not sure how well on camera that shows up but the design is pretty much the same the screen touch display on this one is a little bit more recessed than on the original one. So I do like that a little bit better. And you can actually see the plus and the minus uh, for your volume controls. Uh, better on this one in my opinion. It is made with 100% recycled mesh fabric, which is nice. It is 6.6 .6 inches tall, 5.6 inches wide, and weighs 5.16 pounds. So that makes it ever so slightly smaller than the original one. And you can kind of tell if you look really closely, but they look about the same size. But side by side, you can tell it is slight, slightly smaller. Uh, but not by much. So we'll get rid of this one for now. Now this new uh, HomePod utilizes the S7 chip originally used for the Apple Watch Series 7. It does support Bluetooth 5.0. Apple did add a U1 ultra wideband chip to this one as well as support for thread and matter. So that's great for those of us interested in building a smart home. Again, more on that in a minute. In terms of audio, it has a single four inch high excursion woofer and five tweeters two less tweeters than the seven that were found in the original HomePod. It includes four microphones designed for far field um, Siri communication, you know, uh, two less actually than found in the first gen. So it does have a little notch in there. I don't know if you can see it on camera. All right, so we got it plugged in. Let's see what it does. There we go. And we get the little animation on our Apple device, tap set up. So this is all very similar to the uh, the first generation and the HomePod Mini if you've done that. One of the great things about Apple Home uh, or Apple devices in general is just how easy they are to set up. So uh, you can see here asking me which home to put it in. I've got a few smart homes here. Uh, I'm gonna put this, let's go ahead and put this in the studio for now use HomePod. So I already have an Apple TV in this studio and it's asking me if I want to use it as my TV speaker, uh, which is really cool. So I could go ahead and do that if I want. I'll skip that for now. And it's going to finish setting up. There we go. Our HomePod is now ready. All right, so you can, of course, play music from your Apple Music subscription or Apple Podcasts. You can also use other third-party apps like Pandora, iHeartRadio, and more as the default music service on your HomePods, but there's still no support for Spotify. You can, however, play audio to any HomePod from your iPhone using AirPlay 2 and stuff like that, including Spotify, so that would work. You just can't tell Siri 
on the home pods you know to play spotify as your default audio source now it does have a larger touch surface than the original one the display on this one is more like the home pod mini uh, it kind of illuminates from edge to edge there when you're interacting with it tap once to play and pause double tap to skip ahead triple tap to rewind tap and hold to trigger Siri. And of course you have your volume controls here on either side. Now I don't really like doing sound quality tests on YouTube because there's just so many factors between me and what you hear like my microphone, YouTube compression, the headphones you're listening on. But I will share my thoughts, you know, after doing my own very unscientific test. And to be clear, I'm certainly no audiophile and people do definitely hear things different. This has just been my experience. So I did compare the new one to the first generation HomePod just to see if I could tell a difference and man it is really really close I do think the first generation sounds slightly better if I had to pick one again that's just based on you know what I'm hearing with my ears the first one has always and still does sound really really good probably a little bit before it's time to be honest but these are very close so the question probably is how in the world can these have sound quality that's even close to the first generation when they technically have less speakers and less microphones? And the Apple answer is going to be improved computational audio using a new system sensor for real-time tuning to preserve dynamic range and maximize acoustic performance. So what does that mean? It basically has a room sensing feature that allows the HomePod to automatically understand its location in a room to listen for sound reflections and tunes the sound accordingly no matter where it's placed in the room for example if it's up against a wall or whether it's you know out in the open or something like that paired with another home pod etc it's basically always adjusting in real time to provide the best audio which is quite impressive and i think that's something that might get overlooked a little bit with these things is just how well the apple engineers had to make this thing and were able to make this thing sound even with less speakers in the first generation. So these sound really good, but where they really shine is when you have not one, but two of them paired together in stereo mode, especially if you're using them with an Apple TV. I haven't compared them to my 5.1 surround sound uh, that I have in my living room, but first, a word from today's sponsor, Trend Micro. Big thanks to Trend Micro for sponsoring today's video. I've been using the Trend Micro Premium Security Suite on all of my devices for years now to add an extra layer of protection against malware, viruses, ransomware, and other threats. You can use this for up to 10 devices and it's super easy to set up to protect all the devices in your household. It also turns any public hotspot into a secure Wi-Fi connection with a VPN, which is always a great feature to have. Really important, you know, if you're out and about using those public Wi-Fi networks. You also get access to other great tools with this suite like identity theft protection, parental controls, and even 24 seven emergency assistance. Check out the link in the description and use code SHANE10 for 10% off your purchase of the premium security suite. Big thanks to Trend Micro for sponsoring today's video and protecting all of my devices. So two HomePods paired together in stereo pair, like I said, is really where the magic is. They do support spatial audio as well as Dolby Atmos for a fully immersive cinematic home theater experience when paired to your Apple TV 4K. I actually always wanted to do this with the first generation HomePods, but I never did. So I tried this in two places in my studio right here, which is currently in the middle of a makeover, so don't judge the room. I'll be painting and moving some furniture in this weekend, so subscribe if you wanna see the full tour coming pretty soon. Uh, but I also put a stereo pair in my living room just to try that out. Again, I was curious to see how it would compare to an actual 5.1 surround sound system. Now this is just a mid-level Vizio 5.1 surround sound system. Certainly nothing fancy. We're talking six speakers, including an actual subwoofer compared to just, you know, two HomePods. But the computational audio on the HomePods was really quite incredible. It really did sound like you're surrounded by the audio at times and the sound was very clear and powerful in this room. While I was very impressed at how well it sounded, they weren't quite as good as the actual surround sound. That's 
to be expected. And when I used the stereo pair with my Apple TV in the studio, they were even better. So probably this, you know, smaller space and everything. Now I don't have a dedicated surround sound in this space. So this is where two of these new HomePods is going to be perfect for me. It's hard to explain and it really doesn't make much sense when you consider, you know, just having two speakers in front of you, but somehow the stereo pair um, with Dolby Atmos and everything really does create this sound that sort of surrounds you. Very impressive uh, just for two speakers up near your TV. Now the latest Apple TV 4K also supports eARC, which means you can use HomePods as audio sources for all the devices connected to your TV, like Xbox, PlayStation, etc. And regarding the stereo pair, you can only pair two of the same model HomePods together. So you cannot pair a new HomePod with an older first generation HomePod or a new HomePod with a HomePod mini or something like that, not as a stereo pair. Unfortunately, it would have been nice if we could have used the new one with the old one. You can still play music to multiple HomePods at the same time um, through AirPlay too. So this is a great way to get whole home audio everywhere in your house really easily. You can use the big HomePods in you know some rooms, HomePod minis in other rooms, even the old HomePods, and easily play everywhere or just to certain rooms or certain HomePods. So you could tell Siri to play music in the bedroom or play audio in an entire zone by saying something like play music downstairs and it'll play on all the downstairs home pods you can also tell Siri to play everywhere or stop playing everywhere also really cool is you can move uh, music audio from one home pod to another just say something like move this to the bedroom now playing in the bedroom and you can also play different things on different HomePods so your kids can listen to music on a HomePod mini in their room, for example, and you can listen to your music or podcasts while you're in the kitchen. Now, there's a better handoff experience with the new HomePods. It's now much like the HomePod mini thanks to the addition of the U1 ultra wideband chip. Handoff just lets you transfer what's playing on your iPhone to your HomePod and even the other way around just by holding your iPhone near it. You get some nice haptic feedback on your iPhone as you bring your phone closer to the HomePod. Now this will work with music, podcasts, or even phone calls. Just again, bring your phone close to the HomePod to transfer the audio. You can use Find My on your HomePod to find your iPhone or other devices or even your family or friends that are sharing location with you. Where are my keys? It's nearby. Pinging Shane's keys now. Where is Caroline? Caroline Woodley is about 11 miles away. Near 1085. Now possibly one of my favorite features of the HomePod is intercom. Again, being a smart home, having HomePods everywhere. You can use this to quickly speak to HomePods throughout your house. I use this all the time with my family. Certainly beats yelling across the house. Siri, intercom Macy's room. This is a test. This is a test intercom. Okay, intercom to Macy's room. Now a little bonus tip, Intercom also works across all of your Apple devices, including iPhones, Apple Watches, iPads, AirPods, and even CarPlay. So you never have to worry about missing one of those announcements. It worked. Okay, thanks, and this is the test from my watch. Okay, okay, okay thanks, and this is the test from my, watch. Test from my watch. watch. Now, of course, with Siri built in, you can utilize the voice assistant for personal requests, things like setting timers, creating reminders, you know, adding milk to your grocery list. You can also just ask Siri for an update to get a rundown of upcoming calendar events for, you know, for the day, the weather, the news. Uh, and, you know, one of my favorite things is being able to run personal shortcuts with Siri um, or control your smart home. The new HomePods will act as a smart home hub, a HomeKit hub. This allows you to add smart home devices to your home and you can control them with your HomePod, with Siri, or with any of your Apple devices. With the HomePod as your HomeKit hub, you can create smart home automations as well as control your home remotely when you're away. This HomePod has thread built in, unlike the first generation HomePod, meaning this can act as a thread border router for your thread smart home products. It also has support for Matter, which is the new smart home standard we'll start seeing much more of this year. With Matter, essentially you can buy anything off the shelf 
shelf with that little matter logo on it and you can feel confident that it will work with your smart home regardless of what smart home platform you use like Google Home, Amazon's Alexa, Smart Things, and yes, of course, Apple Home. We do now have a temperature and humidity sensor in the new HomePod, so you can ask Siri for the temperature or humidity in your room. You can also check it on your phone, and even better, you can use it for your smart home automations. For example, if it gets too hot in the bedroom, close your smart blinds or turn on the fan from a smart plug. Now a new feature coming this spring via firmware update is something called sound recognition. This will actually come to the HomePod mini as well as the new HomePods, but this allows your HomePod to listen for smoke and carbon monoxide alarms. And if it detects either, you'll get a notification on all of your Apple devices. We'll also be able to create smart home automations around this, which is pretty awesome. Now let's talk privacy real quick uh, since it is a smart speaker. Apple says they will never share or sell your data and all home processing is end-to-end -end encrypted and done locally on your HomePod. So requests to Siri are also associated with the random identifier and not your personal Apple ID. And one thing I love is they won't bombard you with ads like other voice assistants. There's also an option to turn off improve Siri dictation, which allows Apple to store and review audio from your Siri interactions to improve Siri. So you can turn that off. Uh, in fact, I think that's off by default. And you can also delete Siri history anytime. So final thoughts. Well, first of all, I'm very happy they brought back a full-size HomePod. I think it was certainly missing in the lineup since discontinuing the first generation. They took the original HomePod and basically updated it with a better chip, giving it faster processing power, ultra wideband, and updated smart home capabilities like thread support. Unfortunately, this one does have less speakers than the first generation, but the computational audio on this thing, like I said, is so good that it still sounds really amazing. I don't think I can say that it sounds better than the first one, but it's pretty darn close. I don't think I'd be replacing the first generation of HomePods with these just for sound quality, in other words. Um, now for those smart home features, and maybe if you start having issues with your original HomePod, then that might be a reason to replace those with these. I do think it's a great product with a lot of great features, almost all of which can also be found in the HomePod mini though. So why get this? I mean, who is this product really for? You know, it's for those who, first of all, are really deep into the Apple ecosystem and really want a good, a great sounding smart speaker. You have to use an Apple device to set up the HomePod. You can't stream music via Bluetooth from an Android and there's no physical audio inputs on the HomePod. So those are all limitations. But if you're all in on Apple devices and that ecosystem, you probably don't need any of those things. And if you are all in on Apple, if you just want the smart home capabilities and the Siri voice assistant, you'd be better off just getting the mini probably. You can get three of those for the price of one of these, you know, put them throughout the house. You can use that intercom feature in multiple rooms and get all those smart home benefits. For those who really want all of that and a really good sounding speaker, this big HomePod right here is for you. Not cheap, again, $300, but for the sound you get really is not that bad. And like I said, where it really shines is using two of these in a stereo pair with an Apple TV. That is the best combination. I'll be setting mine up permanently like that here in the studio. Combine that with the eARC support and you can use this stereo pair of HomePods as your default speakers for any of your devices connected to your TV, uh, which that does also work with the HomePod minis, by the way. To see a video on how to set that up, you can click on this one right over here and subscribe if you haven't already because we'll have a lot more smart home stuff on the way here on this channel. Big thanks again to Trend Micro for sponsoring today's video. Thank you so much for watching today and I'll see you in the next one.